My goal in this video is to show you how to use one EV3 uh, brick to control another EV3 brick or creating a good Bluetooth controller. I've tried a bunch of the other stuff and I found them to be less than responsive. Plus, I love the fact that students can actually program this to go to their own speed or their own talents or actually where they want to go. It gives an extra part of programming. So first, we're going to start out. I've created a program called EV3 Remote. And in there, I have two tabs. One's the transmitter and receiver. You can put controller and robot. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just use transmitter and receiver because of some of my background. So the very first thing we're going to want to do is we're actually going to create a Bluetooth connection between the two robots. And at the end of this video, I'll show you how to do that with the two robots. And once we do that, we're going to use that connection to send text messages from the, the transmitter or the controller to the receiver or the robot. So let's set up our transmitter and receiver programs. The transmitter is based on sending text messages. The first thing I've got to do is establish a Bluetooth connection. To do that, I'm going to go down to the bottom here. I'm going to grab the Bluetooth connection button, and I'm going to initiate. So I'm going to initiate a connection with my robot. This has to be spelled exactly as it is on the robot. If you use the EV3 brick to name it, it's probably all uppercase. I did not. I used this program to rename it. So I have uppercase and lowercase, and I just called it robot. Now, after that, I'm going to create a forever loop because I want to keep controlling it until I turn it off. So that's my forever loop. That's pretty easy. I'm just going to call it transmitter just because I'm kind of that way. There's my transmitter loop. In that, I'm going to put a switch. And that switch is going to be based on the brick buttons themselves. I'm going to measure the brick buttons. That's going to give me my basic setup. Now, here, if you've not played with a switch before, there's the world's smallest button Lego could find, and it's add case. I'm going to have four active cases and one default case. So I've only got two here, and I need five. I'm going to click this three times and add my cases. So the first one's gonna be my default case, and my default case is gonna be not pushing anything. If nobody's pushing any button, I want it to transmit stop. That way I can stop all the motors at the other side. So I'm gonna go down here to my messages. And again, I've got to tell it where I'm transmitting. So I'm sending a text message, and I'm sending it to robot. This is kind of redundant, but you do have to redo that each time. You gotta remember that same name. And I'm going to transmit stop, not uppercase, just a straight stop. So that sets that up. My first button, and I'm going to copy this because it saves me from writing robot a bunch of times. I'm going to put it down in my second case. And my first case I'm going to work on is going forward. Now, remember, don't click this button. It's your default case. It should only be on the stop. This is going to be my forward, so I'm going to transmit forward. Then I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And I'm going to control V again, and I'm going to do my reverse. So this one's going to say reverse, go backwards. And I'm going to make that button my backward button. That's my down button. I got my up button. I got my down button. Now I need my left and right buttons. Ooh, look, there was something way back there. So left and right buttons. I stick this one in here, and this one's going to be my left button left and to do that i'm going to use the left choice for the buttons and my last one's going to be my right button oh i love it when they hide behind it my right button it's going to say right and up here i'm going to make sure it's the right push button now there are there is one more button the middle button which i haven't used uh as you saw the ghosting image there you can actually program this to do things with push buttons. I've done that. Uh, you can add a true false condition, which will allow you to turn every button into two options. These are all nice things. It's kind of up to you. All right, so that's the basic transmitter program. Uh, for those of you who don't know computers, I'm going to go ahead and save now because invariably what happens is it crashes. So control S, maybe. We'll just go file save. And I'm going to go to my receiver program, and I'm going to put in my forever loop. I cheated and put it in ahead of time. Put in my for, and I'm going to put a switch in it. 
And in front of that switch, I'm actually going to put a, a message system. So I'm going to be receiving text messages. So I'm gonna set this as a receive text message. And then I'm gonna connect these two. So it's coming in, oh, it's like for, sorry. I gotta remember that I gotta do this to text first. So this goes to text. And then I connect these two together. So as the text message comes in, it'll send this to this. My default case is going to be stop. So in stop, I kind of like this, by the way, you don't have to put the quotes in, it just does it for you. My default case for stop will be all the motors off. So my default case for stop will be everything off. That's it. Now, I want to go, I had four other options. And actually, let's hit the button while we're here because we know about the teeny tiny button. I need three more options. Two, three. So now my next one's going to be on and going forward. So I'm just going to put it as on. If you put it a limited space like on, on for seconds or on for rotations, that's fine for controlling things. But you want it to just roll when you press the button. Uh, the minute you stop pressing the button, it'll automatically go to the stop and it'll stop the engine. So this one we're going to put forward. I'm going to actually copy this because I'm going to reuse it again. I love copy and paste. It's one of my favorite things to do. I'll put it down here. And this one, I'm going to set all this to negative 50. So that'll go backwards. And I'm going to change this up here to reverse. So now I got forward, back. I got reverse. And this next one's funny. It depends kind of how you have it hooked up whether you got left or right. So this is gonna be my left. By the way, these all have to match exactly spelling and they have to match case. So left turn, I'm gonna turn off this side and it's going to do a tank spin, which I kind of like to the left. I'm gonna do once more down here, right turn. And this one, I'm gonna put this as zero. It's gonna tank to the right. If you find it's tanking the wrong direction, great. The easiest way to fix that is just to go um, up and change right and left around. Oops. Easiest way is turn right and left around. Okay, so that's the basic program. Um, and that's how it looks. Hopefully I didn't go too fast. Uh, after this, I'll show you how to connect the bricks and you'll be pretty set to go. Connecting the bricks. I have two bricks here. And my goal is to connect them using Bluetooth so that I can use this brick as my controller for this brick's motors. To do that, what I'm going to do is go to Bluetooth. And as long as it's turned on on the receiver, I'm fine. I have to remember the name of the ro a robot. In this case, it's robot. I'm going to go over here on this Bluetooth. I'll go into Bluetooth. And I'm going to go up to Connections. And I'll click that, and then I'm going to hit search. Um, one warning on this search process, if you have a lot of Bluetooth devices in the area or a lot of robots, uh, I've noticed it can handle about 8 or 10 different Bluetooth items, and then it kind of locks out. Um, when you do this Bluetooth connection, you may want to be in a place where there's few robots or just a few turned on. And if people have phones and stuff, I've noticed a lot of those show up. Um, so you'll see robot showed up as an available thing. I'll click it. Now it's going to ask for connections. And I'm going to connect. And then it's going to give me the connect button. Now what's happened on the robot I'm connecting to, it, I've got this whole screen too. And I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I would like to connect to that. It'll give me a passkey. I'll say fine. I'm going to go over here, say yes, I'd like to connect to that. It'll give me a passkey. I'll say fine. <laughs> Then the two robots are now connected. This robot can now control this robot. And I can try that. I've already loaded the program. So let me get out of this. Okay, so let me get out of this. And I'm going to load up. In this case, I when I wrote my program, I called the one for the transmitter. I called it transmit, and this is in EV3 remoting. Whoops. I hate it when I do that. So I'll click transmitter and it's going to transmit. 
if you get a, a sound, it says clunk or something like that, what it means, generally speaking, is in the program, you've used something that's not the name of the robot you're connecting to, and it fails out. So over here, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to hook up receiving. Back into my thing. This is the receiver. Now I've got my two. Now I can press this button. You know, notice there's my, my wheels go forward. Press this to go back, left, right. I have my basic controls. Um, and that is basically how to hook these up remote-wise. I hope that helps some.